and welcome to Action Teacher Video. Video is a powerful tool that teachers are using to reflect on their own practice and to communicate new ideas. In this series, we feature videos produced by teachers themselves and discuss the contents and implications here in the studio. In this program, we'll be looking at an innovative approach to teaching physics in Bungay High School, captured on camera by teacher Mark Lawrenson and called Introducing Interactive Voting System. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Mark Lawrenson. Hi Mark, Hi. welcome to the program. Joining Mark is another teacher with some similar experiences and concerns from Charles Edward Brooks School, Michelle Grant. Hi Michelle. Hello. I am also delighted to introduce consultant and contributor to Teachers TV, Adrian Jones. Hello. Hello. Firstly, Mark, I wonder if you could give me a bit of background to the project. Well, we were fortunate enough to be able to be funded by the Rolls-Royce Science Prize. For a number of years, we'd looked at trying to improve the performance of students in physics. And with the development of the new technology, we were able to buy a wireless voting system that allows students to input data for answers and feedback instantaneously. Whilst we're very lucky in teaching a subject such as science, which lends itself to a range of multiple intelligence activities. One of the main issues that faces us is assessment. Still, the vast majority of how we assess students' achievement is based on paper activities. If we're going to engage the students, if we're going to target various levels of ability, then we need to explore wider ranges of assessment methods that not only challenge the students, but also extend them. Do you find that many of your classes have difficulty engaging with the subject? That the methods that you use don't reach out to all the students? They're missing interactivity? That actually sometimes they appear bored and unfocused? What you need is one of these. An interactive voting system. Let me introduce the two basic components of all the software you'll be using. The system that we have here allows us to generate the questions. What we've been able to do is to map on exam style questions with a multiple choice answer. We're able to put on a time limit and secondly we can actually give it a point score that relates to the difficulty of the question. The second section which is just as important is being able to link student results and their performance. What we're able to do in this case, for every student, we have not only a register, but a running total of their performance in every single lesson. The biggest change we found was to our lesson preparation and our classroom management. Firstly, you need to prepare the students for using this regularly. Secondly, you need to change the structure of your lesson in order to make the most of the equipment. There's a table which they have their names on and the person with the highest score is at the top and the person with the lowest is at the bottom. Do you like that? Is it competitive? You know, do you look forward to that? Be embarrassing if you're at the bottom. So there's a sort of a drive and a motivation to get up the top. Yeah, you want to be as close to the top. To make sure the students become really comfortable with using the equipment, we use it every lesson. That way students not only were able to turn the equipment on and access the software quickly, but also that they were able to fault find. And if there were issues such as battery loss, then we could replace handsets quickly. What does HTI stand for? Yeah. And then there's like a list of four answers, A, B, C and D, and then you type in whichever one you think is right. In order to maximise effectiveness and time, we introduced this from the start of the lesson base the star track around it. This means when students are in, getting ready, they're logging on. They're getting the system set up, they're fault finding, and in those first few minutes, actually, they're making sure the system's ready to work the entire lesson. One spin-off, actually, that we found was in order to make sure each handset was available to all students, we used a PIN number. Great tip, use their exam number as their personal entry code. different because you're not answering it out loud and it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. 
when everyone's logged on, then use it for a starter activity. Five questions will do it, either recapping previous work or using it as an opinion-based system to give students impressions of the topic you're just about to cover. We find it like funner and easier because there's like less writing involved and it's like more learning because you're having fun. You have it easy in your hand. You then have two approaches to the rest of the lesson. One is to use continual assessment. Now that has some benefit in the sense that you're continually assessing students' work or getting them to input their ideas, their opinions, or if they've changed their minds. There are two issues with that, however. Firstly, on a basic note, quite frankly, the batteries run down quickly if you run them continuously for maybe five hours during a day. Secondly, and more important in terms of lesson structure, is by having the lessons being continually assessed, what tends to happen is the lesson becomes bitty. A 10-minute activity, a vote, a check, a return to another activity, and if you're not careful, you lose structure and pace. Our preferred system was not only to use the voting system as a starter, but actually as a plenary. Where you see students start the lesson, where they're coming from, teach the lesson, focus on the learning objectives and then recap at the end, then you really do see students making progress. And by displaying the information, students also get a feeling of progression has been made in that lesson. A wonderful innovation there. I wish I'd had it when I was at school. But how did you introduce it into your classes? We decided really that we had to put it in as quickly as possible make sure that it was introduced as many classes, that we trialled it, we found the pitfalls, not be afraid of failure, and actually it was very important that all the classes got to see the equipment, so it made everyone feel as though they had an input, and it allowed staff a lot of practice in having some success, having some failures, but more importantly, actually learning how to use the system as effectively as possible. Mark, you've been experimenting with this system for a while now. What have been the outcomes so far? The initial outcome that we measured was one that we had expected. Although it was a gut reaction, we have seen great improvement in performance for less able and middle ability students. And does this really increase motivation in students? Definitely. And it seems to affect different groups in different ways. There are those bo students, particularly boys, who are very kinesthetic learners. The, the ability to have a handset, to put in the information regularly, to have something they can work with, that gets them to really focus. Also, particularly with boys again, their competitive nature comes out. However, I wouldn't say it's just a boy-friendly system. One of the big advantages that we found is many students who are more worried about putting their hand up and maybe getting a question wrong, it's given them a voice of their own. So rather than contributing maybe once in a lesson, they're effectively putting their hands up 24, 30 times a lesson. And that really has helped students who perhaps sometimes wouldn't be taking part in the lesson. There's a table which they have their names on and the person with the highest score is at the top and the person with the lowest is at the bottom. Do you like that? Is it competitive? You know do you look forward to that? It'd be embarrassing if you're at the bottom. <laughs> so there's a sort of a drive and a motivation to get up the top. Yeah, you want to be as close to the top. Well, Adrienne, the girls certainly seem keen on setting targets. What do you think? The motivation you were talking about certainly seemed to emerge there. But uh, there's a concern, from me anyway, about multiple choice questions. Are they not limiting? They can be at times. I think one of the things that we've developed as we've been wor working through the project is actually our questioning techniques, even using something as simple as multiple choice, has really come on. Whereas before they were simply factual recall, mm -hmm. as we've gone on we've been able to develop a questioning style that asks students to give their opinions or have answers that are very close together, where in fact they need to make a very clever and very complex judgement between the answers. Michelle, Mark's talking about a sort of technological resource. Uh, how important do you think that is in teaching? Well, I think what you see there is how much it enhances teaching and learning. And it's something that I've been interested in in my school with. We're doing an energy project and the students are getting used to handling the technology. They're wearing accelerometers 
for the week. It just seems like a great focusing technique for the students. Michelle, maybe you can tell us a bit about how your pupils' attitudes changed. Well, they knew that they were having a big input into what was happening in school and this um, important research that they were taking part in is a pilot scheme so they knew that they were the, they were at the forefront of this information. They were they are taking responsibility for wearing the accelerometers. They were filling in diaries, making sure they were detailed enough for the researchers to read them properly, properly and use the data for some good. It's different because you're not answering it out loud and it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. We find it like funner and easier because there's like less writing involved and it's like more learning because you're having fun. You have it easy in your hand. Michelle, the girls like to be anonymous. Does this surprise you? Definitely not. And it's very hard as teachers because you have to make sure that you get, you do get those answers out of the quieter students. So I think this is a really great way to make sure that that doesn't, that they don't go unnoticed and that you are tracking their progress in the lesson as much as those that have all the energy and all the right answers and the confidence to speak out. Mark, if you were going to generalise about the outcomes of the voting system that you've been using, what would you say? I would say within our own project we had an enormous impact. We saw some groups, their performance rose on average by one entire GCSE grade. We also found classes even more motivated. There was a buzz around not only the students but their friends other groups who didn't use the system kept pestering staff wanting to do it. We found we were able to monitor student progress, parents really appreciated the feedback and the students felt really that they were involved in cutting edge science. This is pretty impressive Michelle. Do you think it could be used in your school and also in other subject areas? I think it's really adaptable to any subject and I'm a dance specialist and I can even think of ways now as to how I could implement that. In, within the GCSE course there is a real um, theoretical aspect where they have to learn its um, dancer in action kind of biology so that, that's the area that my students particularly struggle with so something like this would really aid those kinds of students. Well, there's a lot of enthusiasm around it but how are you going to take it further? Well, certainly, we've got a huge opportunity at the moment with the new GCSE curricula being introduced this year. With aspects such as how science works and the development of scientific literacy, we're actually able to integrate it right into the scheme of work from the beginning, so it becomes a, an integral part of the, the course. We'd certainly like to experiment more with open-ended questioning. Again, as you alluded to earlier, some of the multiple choice questions, they're very closed. And I think over time we'll develop our skills with that. And certainly what we're now aiming to do is work with the biology and chemistry departments and departments right around the school. But I think the future is looking very rosy indeed. I think the future is terribly exciting, but unfortunately we have to end it there. You can, of course, find out more from our website at teachers.tv. It only remains for me to say thank you to our teacher producer, Mark Lawrenson, and guest, Michelle Grant, and thanks to Adrian Jones. Please join us again on Action Teacher Video, and in the meantime, from me, Xanthi Steen, goodbye.